Okay, folks, my man, get out, Mike's Instant Movie Review. Let's discuss the film. What did I think? Uh, this is a re-release. The movie came out in January, uh, Sundance 2017, and then uh, distributed in the theaters in February of 2017. I remember seeing it in the theater. I don't think I've ever watched it since. I mean, obviously, this has been a movie a tentpole movie is that I don't even think that's the appropriate term but a landmark movie in some ways uh, Jordan Peele really got on the map as a feature film director I never really do you mind truck man has to show how great he is uh, Jordan Peele uh, golf clap for your fucking truck asshole uh, Jordan Peele put his name on the map for horror films with this one. He was a big guy for, uh, what's the show, Kay and Peele, which I never never really watched until recently. Last couple of years, I enjoy his show. So this, uh, it's a horror film. It's a social commentary. Is it a parody? Is it a, is it a dark comedy in some ways? Um, it, was it the predecessor? I mean, this this movie came out a good uh, two or three years or four years before the whole uh, George Floyd, Black Lives Matter uh, situation. Actually, two, two separate things. I mean, George Floyd, uh, the murder, the death was an unfortunate, horrible situation. Uh, I would refer you, if you haven't watched it, to that Candace Owen Williams, or Candace Williams documentary, uh, The Greatest Lie Ever Sold, about the hashtag Black Lives Matter, and more specifically, uh, the the company, uh, the LLC or whatever it is, uh, with the same name. But anyway, this movie, obviously, there had been other situations uh, going back to the history, the birth of our country. You know, all men are created equal if you're of a certain skin color is what uh, we are led to have lived under. And we've been living with our greatest sin, slavery, ever since the foundation of our country. So what are we going to do about it? We're going to make movies. Um, and so this one, I liked the movie. I probably liked it more this time because I kind of forgot uh, when I first saw it, I think I was preoccupied by the person I was with, uh, their situation, my situation, my feelings on what they thought of the movie. This time I saw it on my own, which is really the best way to enjoy a film so you don't have anyone else's thoughts uh, tinkering with your own. So what are my thoughts? First of all, I don't know if I caught in the first movie the kind of uh, prologue to, to the Get Out movie with the gentleman with the beard is walking happily along the, the, the suburban neighborhood. He's got a couple of streets mixed up and then he gets attacked and assaulted um, by this, this crazy group, this, these people with they're wearing like masks and stuff. Actually, I think you only see one assaultant and he's talking, apparently, you would think to a woman on the phone that he's trying to find. I did not realize the first time that I saw this that in the movie, you know, 45 minutes or an hour later, we see the same character uh, now with a shaven face. His beard is gone. His mustache is gone. And he's basically, you know, one of these people that have been abducted by this crazy white family and um, had his mind supplanted. And I didn't realize, I don't think I realized that the first time. And I will say this, this might be a potential plot hole or just something that's not quite uh, up to par, Jordan, because uh, the movie is great. But it's like, why is his character, why is the prologue victim, uh, why is he like abducted in the middle of the su suburbs sidewalks? Why didn't he get the seduction to the family home treatment? Do you see what I'm saying? Because it seems like a big part of this family's seduction of our main guy here, Chris, in the majority of Get Out, is that he is lured in, you know, by the white girlfriend into the, the family home, and that's where they get to take advantage of him and, and do their thing. But in the prologue, that character, he's kidnapped in the suburbs, in the kind of like in the open streets, where you don't know if there's any surveillance cameras or anything like that going on and then they have to drag them back into the middle of nowhere so do you see what i'm saying like it's kind of a thing where 
it, it's a little bit of a discongruence. Now, nowhere is it stated in a contract in gold that every victim has to be allured back to the family home. But if that's not the case, why go through all the hassle with Chris? Well, I guess so we can have a movie. Okay. So, uh, you know, now look, I think this is one of those movies where depending on who you are and where you're from and your, your fucking life, you're going to experience this movie in a different way. As a, as, a, as a white person, a Caucasian that I am, I can have empathy, I can have sympathy, but do I ever really know what it's like to, to be an African-American male in my mid-20s, uh, dating a white woman and meeting her fucked up family and getting my brain transfixed and all this shit? Obviously, I can't. Uh, but, but we're not expecting anyone to really know what this is like. But uh, I guess the idea for it is this movie, uh, the African-American population or, or other, basically anybody that's not fucking white can see this movie and, and say, yes, that's what it feels like. Uh, that's what it's like. And so, you know, I might have a limited understanding, but I'm going to share my insights or my, my per, perhaps my insights. And you can argue and you can disagree and you can comment all you like or you don't like. So, what did I think? I mean, first of all, it's a very effective movie. Um, I, I enjoyed it. I mean, it's it's got the horror thing down. The bait, so to speak, uh, you know, the white woman. Uh, yes, she's attractive. She's kind of simmering. Um, like, she always has, like, uh, you know, level five to level nine sexuality boiling under the surface. Uh, Allison Williams, I believe, is the actress. I can't say I've seen her in much of anything since can't remember i'm sure she's doing some fucking netflix show that i don't watch uh the gentleman i, I have a hard time pronouncing his name sorry the lead guy he's been in a bunch of other jordan peele movies i think he was in basically all of them he was in the one the one that i i liked uh, the, the cowboy one the, the brother and sister stunt the whatever the fuck one um was he in us or not i can't remember um, but yeah, I mean, you get it. You feel the horror. I mean, I think there's a thing, I'll just be honest. I think as a white person, you know, and probably I felt this more the first time I saw this movie than this one. There is a level of defensiveness in enjoying this movie. Cause you're like, man, do, do black people really see us this way in this horrible, God awful way? I'm not like that, but you know, what the fuck, you know, I mean, how, how can you, uh, as the oppressor, as the evil one, how can you s state that you're not like that if that's the feeling that people get? I mean, who are you to tell someone else their fucking feelings, man? But, you know, if you just kind of put that shit aside, uh, is it a, an effective horror movie? Most definitely. Is there a metaphor here? And am I reading the metaphors correctly? Is the sunken play... First of all, Catherine Keener does an excellent job. Yes, I know her name because I've been watching her since being John Malkovich and uh, other things was she no that was rachel griffiths on uh six feet under but uh, fucking what's your face right uh catherine keener is like the the badass you know head mama in this thing the mom um with her fucking you know teacup and her fucking hypnosis uh the sunken place is this a metaphor for the black individual in America losing their identity to the white man, to white society, like no longer getting to be themselves, having to, 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 to live uh, in this other thing. Is that the metaphor? Like, you know, that, that they, they can't even be themselves. They have to play act like they're someone else. And you might as well be, you know, if you can't be yourself, you might as well let someone else take over your brain, take over your body. Uh, I mean, I think that's kind of the cool thing about this movie. It, as great as this movie it is, and like I said, I did feel a little more, a lot more connected to the movie this time than the first time I saw it. Um, there's a few things that are like, okay, you know, as Jordan evolves as a filmmaker. Uh, we can see that some of these things get a little tightened. I actually like the movie Us quite a bit. I'm trying to remember the one, the fucking cowboy and the stunt doubles and all that shit. I'm trying to remember the title of that one. Anyway, I like the movie. I mean, 
as the black female officer, the African-American officer says, you know, those white girls will get you every time. And I think that's true. I mean, I think, you know, uh, the, 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 the white woman has been the downfall of, of many a person. I mean, whether you're black guy, white guy, uh, whatever the fuck, the white woman is very dangerous, very poisonous, okay? So we should keep that in mind when enjoying this film. Uh, what else? I don't know. Uh, Catherine Keener, I mean, I guess you could call her the OG Karen character. The, the dad is funny. Uh, my man, the the brother is also pretty good. You watch MMA, you know, like he's such a douche cunt. Uh, what else? I mean, you know, the friend helping the guy out. I mean, the the thing with, you know, we're TSA, we take care of motherfucking problems. I mean, okay. I mean, you know, it, it just, I do like the movie quite a bit. Uh, there was that song from us. Uh, I got my, da, da, da. you know, the, the song from us, I kept wanting that to be in this movie, but that's a different movie. Um, anyway, I liked it. I mean, I give the, the, the couple of thumbs up. Good job, buddy. You did a great movie there, Jordan Peele. Good job.